Hello everyone, I'm Steve and I'm back with the PVM uh, restoration. We're trying to finish this thing up and the very last stage is painting the shell. So I put out a quick tip video a couple days ago about how to take the shell apart. I've got it already apart and one last look at it. I've cleaned it up completely and I'm going to now paint it. And uh, I've taped over my vent holes with just some regular blue painting tape that you get from the paint store. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try this little light silver matte glacier gray. Um, and then I've made some stencils, but this one's got the primer built in. It's nice and clean. So I'm going to start with this and put a couple layers of this on lightly uh, to build up that primer. And then if this color isn't exactly what I want, then I can put something on top of that and maybe a little, make it a little darker. And uh, then I'm going to show you the stencil I made. And we're going to put the stencil on the side here of a cool, my cool logo. And, uh, I, but just for now, um, let's go ahead and get this thing set up so I can show you just a little bit of painting I'll be doing. Okay, so I've got set up here to just throw down some paint. I'm going to throw this on there very lightly, spray it on there. Another thing to note, I've taped over my ledge here where there was some uh, slide like vel uh, soft felt tape so that's there I do just use some old cardboard boxes at the bottom I'm just going to put the first layer on very lightly it's a nice day to paint not too windy um, so I'm just going to slowly apply this spray paint So the first coat's just going to be light. And this is the Bennett from puddling or, you know, pooling. Just a light coat. Getting to touch up. We'll let this dry. And then we'll come back. Spray the second coat. I'm going to go for a lot of coats on here. Okay. All right, that's the first coat. We'll come back and put a second coat on here in a little while. While our paint's drying over there, I want to take a quick look at my stenciling here. So I just had to cut these out and I actually got a little creative and just used some backers. So I was going to throw away some backer boards from old comic books. I tried to cut out my logo, the R and the T here. And that's what I'm going to try to use as my stencil to put down my uh, different, my logo. So I'm hoping that it'll work. Uh, I'm going to try to spray it down, but I'm going to have to test it a little bit. And we'll do some tests with it and see how it looks after we get our primer and main color done. I'm hoping that this glacier gray really looks good so we can just have it uh, be that. But let's go ahead now and take a look and see about putting that second coat of paint on it. Okay, and there we have it, a second coat on there. We're gonna dry off and do the third, fourth, fifth coats, and I'll come back after I do three or four more coats and check it out. Check in here, and I want you to see, I've put that coat down to that light gray, and it's more of like a primer coat, so I'm gonna put on this. Now, I'll try this one. It's darker gray, and put it over top of this layer let it dry and then just keep going so that's about I'd say about four coats from that first can on there of that primer gray um, that we're gonna end up using it just as primer so we'll come back after I spray a few more coats of this um, metal brown or dark gray okay so my paint is pretty well dried here on this and I put two coats, like I said, this first was 
These are primers and grays. This is a lighter gray, and the second one I did was another primer gray, but I just don't know. I'm gonna let it sit all night and see how the finish comes out after it fully dries, because I just don't really like the splotchiness of the finish. So I'm either gonna have to go over it again with a third can, and I'll probably stick with this color, but I might go with something textured um, on the finish on this, because there's no real rules. So we'll do that textured probably, since it's not really wanting to go as smooth on this metal. I'm just getting a little bit of bumps and things. So just keep that in mind when you're spray painting. It's, it's kind of harder to get your um, to get your surface perfect from what I can tell just from using cans. So I'm going to go and we'll do that tomorrow and uh, we'll update after I put that coat on because we're going to do that and then we're going to put a couple coats of clear coat on after that. Well hello everyone. I just wanted to give a quick update here again. Still cycling through the paint. I've got it on about its last coat though and then I'm going to use some sealer but I wanted to show it off right before then I decided I tried to go with a little bit of a uh, primer gray that was softer on the finish but after uh, after trying that I kept getting some bubbling effects and it didn't want to finish off the way I kind of hoped it would so I ended up uh, sanding it down a little bit and I used a layer of this Rust-Oleum forged hammered paint to put on the last couple coats and it just seemed to look I mean amazing because just really hard to get spray paint to not bubble at all or have a thick spot or something so I just want to show that off now I'm going to put on three or four layers of clear coat on this thing we're going to let it dry and we'll reassemble again I was going to do those stencils on the side but I'm just not thinking that's a good idea at least not on this one we'll test it some more some future paint jobs but I'm just concerned that that uh, it's not heavy a duty enough of a, a stencil. So let's put the clear coat on and we'll come back. Okay, so I finished up painting uh, the shell as much as I'm going to paint it. I just did that last couple layers of gray, and then I'll show you the clear coat I put on. I'm deciding to skip on the stencils, at least for this one, and the more elaborate paint job until I can get some more experience with spray paints and kind of understanding how to do that process and maybe doing a little bit more practice. And, because honestly that's just not my forte is per, uh, painting. But I think I did a pretty good job on this one. I did put a couple coats of a clear sealant on there that's not got a glossy finish. I didn't want it to be a glossy finish on this monitor. But before we go look at the new finish monitor, I want to just take a quick look at how the shell looked and the rest of the monitor uh, right before we started so you get one last refresher on how this metal scrap looked. Okay, so let's pan around here and take a look at the finished shell. So as you can see, it just came out looking like a pretty standard gray, but I really like the paint job on it. It's much more, um, I just like the way it looks a lot better than the white did. So you can see, it's I had the hammered finish may come out a little bit on this, but it's just got a little bit of texture on there, which is just what I was looking for. So just the standard gray, completely put the back together. Let's go ahead now and set up the monitor and take one last run through look at it and go over the finished product. Back behind the PVM there's one small thing I wanted to show you before I close it up and it's over here at the CRT gun in the neck board right in here. I just put a dab of uh, a two-part epoxy right there to hold the gun and this board right here, the neck board, in place. There was some of that, right where my finger's pointing, there was some of that before, so I just wanted to make sure I noted that I did put that in right before I'm going to close this thing up. And let's go ahead now and put the shell on. I've got it over here sitting. Let's go ahead and put it on. Okay, so let's get the shell right here. I'm going to take and slide this just gently right on the back and to be ready to 
put back together. So, pretty good all in all project. Um, this is the first full restoration I've done on a scrapped out PVM that was supposedly scrapped out. The tube was still really nice, most of it was good. But the cap job will help until so, well, the new paint. So, there we go. It's just time to put in the screws and it'll be ready to test. Okay, so there you got it. It's all put back together. It's looking great. Um, I actually picked uh, the Xbox is set up here, regular Xbox, so I was going to let it play one of my favorite games. Um, through S-Video, I like to test all the inputs on these thoroughly. Uh, so everything's working great on this guy. Uh, we'll take one last spin around this monitor. And um, I really hope you've enjoyed this series. And look, I know people probably have a lot of questions. Uh, first off, I did this capacitor replacement mostly for maintenance, but there was a small issue with this thing where it would lose its settings on the pin settings. And it seemed to be affected by temperature, so I could kind of tell that maybe those capacitors were going bad and letting too much or too little current through and, and losing their charge over time. So I haven't had any issues with that since then. And it was something really hard to catch on film. It would take hours sometimes to mess up. Sometimes it would take 15 minutes and then it would go away. So uh, it's never done it again since then. But let's go ahead and take a look around the monitor. And again, if you have any questions, I will be making a follow-up. We'll just do some gameplay on this monitor. And uh, we'll do, I'll do a Q&A session. But if you've got questions, please leave them below and I'll address them. And uh, have a great day. And thank you for watching RetroTech. But just enjoy this last spin around the monitor.